The 6.5 is on the road with a view from Davos. It's been a great week so far. And World Economic Forum is this very unique co uh, combination, this melding of technology, uh, regulation, uh, talking about governments, and, and of course, uh, there's a lot of discussion around AI. Yeah, it's been a really good week so far, Pat, and the opportunity to speak to many of the world's leaders, both in enterprise and government, provides the chance for us to really share with the audience everything that's kind of going on in the market. We're in this really interesting inflection, and we're seeing AI accelerate this year, and Pat, the people we have on the show just bring so much new insight. So hopefully everybody out there is spending some time with us here in Davos. Yeah, and I want to introduce a guest that actually probably doesn't even need uh, an introduction. Really a champion of open source uh, AI, real mover and shaker out there. Just not afraid uh, to have conversations out in social media. Uh, Jan, uh, welcome to the show. A pleasure. Yeah, I, I guess first and foremost, um, what are you trying to achieve at this show? You know, there's so many changes that have happened in the last year. What, what do you What do you want to achieve here? Okay, what I spend most of my time on, despite you know, <clears throat> which might be misled into thinking uh, because of my external activities, um, I'm really working on like fundamental research to get to the next step in AI because current technology is very limited. You know, everybody is excited about LLMs, and we should you know push them as far as we can, and they're super useful but like they're not a path towards uh, human level intelligence. So I'm really working on, you know, how can we fix that? Well, Jan, you and your team are doing some really incredible work, especially around open. You know, we hear open AI, and of course, a lot of people will also argue that's not actually open. <laughs> not um, at all. Meta has been really focused on bringing open source to the market and enabling so many people to use what you've built with Llama, expand upon it. Can you just talk a little bit about sort of the thinking behind that, because historically that's not necessarily, Meta's not necessarily been all about open, but in AI, it seems like that is the strategy and it's really working well. No, actually uh, the, the whole openness story is really in the DNA of the company. Uh, when I joined uh, Meta late 2013, um, and I, uh, I was you know, talking with Mark Zuckerberg and Mark Schaeffer, who were the CTO at the time, uh, I said, you know, um, for me to, to join Facebook is, uh, you know, to create a research lab in AI. I have three conditions. The first one is I don't move from New York. Uh, I don't quit my job at NYU, so I'll be part-time. And the third one is we need to do open research, publish everything we do, and open source our code. And the answer from both of them was, oh, you don't have to worry about this. It's in the DNA of the company, I quote. Uh, it said, we already open source all of our um, um, infrastructure software. Um, and, and so I, I found that, you know, very uh, interesting, reassuring. So some message I think I wouldn't have gotten from any other player at the time. Uh, and as a consequence, we created the lab. We famously announced that we were going to do open research. And as a consequence, other labs actually became more open, like Google. Yes. Um, and um, it, they kind of rescinded this a little bit now. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and then, you know, OpenAI was created a couple of years later and they, you know, were supposed to be open, but kind of clammed up since then, like completely same with Anthropic. Uh, so so we're, we're uh, the only sort of major player really to play an important role in, uh, in uh, open source, together with a few Chinese players who are really good. Um, so the advantage of this, I mean, the reason why we've seen such a big progress in AI over the last decade or so, is because of the openness. It's because you know information circulates quickly and freely, and that's what kind of pulls everybody. Um, if we start climbing up, progress is going to slow down inevitably. Um, so um, that's one reason. The second reason is if you want to attract the best scientists and, re and researchers, and you tell them you can't talk about what you're doing, you're not getting the best people. Um, Interesting. Third, uh, we get a lot of really interesting advances from the open source world, contributions, ideas, like how to accelerate the inference with Llama, things like that. There's a lot of really interesting work coming from academia, from startups, from independent researchers. Uh, a lot of uh, applications are enabled by AI. I mean, basically Llama, uh, you know, is the substrate on which the entire uh, AI industry now is being built. Um, the, 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 um, like most startups use, use Llama, and a lot of large companies now are migrating from proprietary systems to Llama. 
Yeah, it's been a, it's been a really impressive run. And the, the Llama openness didn't, didn't surprise me because if I look at the open compute project yep. that you did, PyTorch, right. right? It really was, you do have a history of enabling a lot of developers to, to make things happen. Uh, I want to ask you about the future. I know research should be measured in terms of years, uh, but I'd like to ask you about what should we expect over the next two years? I, I uh -huh. know everybody's got a different definition of AGI. Uh, what should we expect and, and when? And I know, you know this, there's no black and white answer here, but, but what are your right. thoughts about the future? Okay, so I don't like the phrase AGI famously because uh, you know human human level human intelligence is very specialized in the first place, right? We know this because we have a lot of computer systems that can do much better than humans in sort of narrow uh, areas. That means we're not so good at everything. Uh, uh, so at, at at Meta we use the the phrase AMI, Advanced Machine Intelligence. Okay, we pronounce it AMI because that means friend in French, yeah. uh, oh. and. Uh, and, and, and that's the mission of, uh, the main mission of, of FAIR. So FAIR is the Fundamental AI Research Lab. The F used to stand for Facebook, but not Fundamental. And, um, and the main mission is really to kind of uh, figure out like the next generation AI system that is capable of doing things that current systems can't do. Understanding the physical world, um, having persistent memory, and being able to reason and plan. Okay, those are kind of the four things that LLMs really can't do without sort of added, you know, ingredients to it. So what's going to happen over the next two years is that um, there's going to be progress using the current paradigm, LLMs with warts, with kind of things bolted on it, so we can do a little bit of reasoning, it can understand images, and you know, various things like this. But it's, it's going to be like a huge hack, and um, and there is diminishing return in like, you know, how much better they get with more data. We already got the data. So, you know, it's saturating. So we need this new paradigm for the next, uh, you know, after that. Um, so I, I expect to see some early um, uh, progress on this sort of new paradigm within three to five years. And perhaps in five years, we'll know if we're on the good path towards something like human level intelligence. The idea behind this, I mean, the reason we're working on this is because you know, we see a future where everyone will wear one of those uh, smart glasses right. and we'll interact with them through, through voice or through, you know, bracelets with EMG um, and, uh, and various other uh, interfaces. And we need those systems to have human level intelligence if you want them to basically act like a human staff or assistant, yeah. right? So all of us would be a boss of like a staff of virtual smart. Well, it's a, really it's a really exciting future, Jan. I want to thank you so much. By the way, the glasses look great. We've, it's come a long way, yes, very stylish. Yeah. That's been sort of my you know, in, inflection is when they were stylish enough that I could actually pull it off and wear them. And, right. and you're wearing them very well. But thanks so much for opening up to us. This is definitely one of those conversations, Pat, that I would like to have spent maybe another 20, 30 minutes. But yes. in Davos here, spending 20 or 30 minutes is like <laughs> eight meetings, right? So it's clean dating. But, but Jan, thanks for joining the 6.5. Let's uh, have you back again sometime soon. Uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks, John. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. What a fascinating conversation. We appreciate you joining the 6.5 on the road. It's a view from Davos. Hit subscribe. Join us for all the great conversations here on the Magic Mountain. For this episode, time to say goodbye. We'll see you all later.